Hey, welcome back to a model a day. So we're going to continue working on this scene today, or I'm going to continue working on this scene today. And you can see since the last video, I've actually made some adjustments to it. I've added in some little extras here and there. I've done a lot of retexturing. I've added in a few more bits of textured materials. Some of the some of the scales and some of the textures need a little bit adjusted, uh, but that's all something that can be done at the end. It's not something that's really vital just now. For example, this piece, the scale on it is really far off compared to some of the other pieces. I've also duplicated this part across just because it didn't really make sense to try and model all or trying to figure out what would go on that side. So just simply duplicated that across, just much easier. Next thing I want to work on is the window. So this should actually be a pretty quick little project today, doing this window. It's essentially all just going to be creating a plane, cutting some faces in, duplicating insets, nothing too fancy at all really. So let's just get down to it. Let's just see how fast we can do this. So I'm just going to zoom in on one of these objects here. Do the period on the number pad or full stop if you're European. And we need to make some adjustments to this. Now I've just noticed this is actually a little bit long. So let's just grab this face, make sure we're in wireframe mode and snap this to be in line. Okay. Let's just jump back to solid mode for the moment. Uh, since we're working on something that fits perfectly in here, I'm just going to isolate this so that we can see it without anything being around it and it'll give us a little bit of an easier way to work. So let's create a plane. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees on X and just move this into place. I can now just go in and go to edit mode, edge mode and snap this to where it should be. So I want this perfectly in line with all these parts. Okay, so that's the first part done. Okay, so this is going to act as the kind of main shape that I'm going to use throughout this portion. So there's essentially going to be three models making up this window. There's going to be the frosted glass or paper, in this case paper probably because it's an interior. There is going to be the main frame, which is going to be thick wood, and there's going to be this inner frame, which is just going to be uh, thin kind of sticks of wood. And it's all going to start from this one part. So I'm going to duplicate it first of all and hide one of those duplicates. That's going to be the glass. The second part, I'm going to go to edit mode, add in an edge and bring that up to about here. And that's going to act as the main frame. So I'm going to take this and this, I'm going to inset them a little bit. I'm going to go to individual. Okay, that's fine. And I'm going to separate off that selection. So this is going to be the main frame. What I want to do with this is go to edit mode, just select all, and I'm just going to extrude this out a little bit. Now I want to extrude this in Y. We'll do that there. That's fine. Object mode again. And let's take that frame and we'll hide that as well. And now we have the actual inner part. This is the fun part. That's where the fun begins. We're going to select edge here, which is going to be this middle part here, down the middle. Select another edge, another edge here, and another edge here. I'm going to select all these edges. I'm going to bevel these out a little bit. So these are a little bit wider. Okay. And once again, I'm going to Separate these off, just hit P, separate those. Go to object mode and select those. Edit mode, select them all, and we're going to extrude these out a little bit. 
So these aren't as thick as the other ones. Okay, and again, hit H, hide those. Now we have these parts. So this is where all these uh, crisscrossing patterns are going to be. So this is an interesting pattern here. It's essentially a four by four grid, but the parts have all been moved. So that's something that I'm essentially just going to do manually. Uh, but these parts are a lot more precise, so I'm going to do that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take one of these. We are going to separate some of this off. So I'm going to separate this off. Separate by selection. I'm going to select this. I'm going to hit Alt D and duplicate that across to here. Now I want to have this lined up perfectly here. Now I can actually see that is a little bit wider. And that's just because of the way the bevel works. If we have a bevel here and we have a bevel here and we uh, or sorry, if we have an edge loop here and an edge loop here and we bevel them out, we take a little bit off the side of this and a little bit off the side of this, whereas on this one we're only taking a little bit off of this side. So that makes this one wider. Now it doesn't really matter too much. I just want to kind of get it more or less in the middle of this object. I'm going to again duplicate this. Move this to here again. I'm going to get it more or less in the middle of this one. And we'll duplicate it one more time and get it in here. Okay, so now we have three duplicates. We'll go back to this original one and we'll delete these three faces off. So the duplicates are made here. They're actually instances using Alt D instead of Shift D. So any change I make to this should change all the other ones as well. So I'm going to add in an edge loop. I'm going to add in 10 cuts. And to save some time, I'm going to bevel them just now. That saves me going back in. I want to make these pretty thin. Let's take them to about that. Okay, so we can actually fill in an exact measurement here. So it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 1. And actually, I think that is maybe too small. So let's try 0, 0, 1. Yeah, 0, 0, 1 is what we're going to be going with. Now we can put in five edges here. This middle edge needs to be beveled to create two edges. And then we'll select this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge. And again, we're going to bevel these 0 0.001, and that gives us the exact same amounts. Now, this is the boring part. Now, what we need to do is actually just go in and duplicate, or sorry, delete off all of these faces. Uh, unfortunately, not really an easy way to do this. It's just a case of going in and selecting them all. So I'll just speed up this part for you. Okay, so with all those selected, I'm just going to delete faces. Then we can select all and extrude these out a little bit more. So we just want this pretty thin. Go back to object mode and there we go. We have that shape pretty much done there. Let's unisolate everything. And let's Alt-H to unhide everything. Okay, so now that we've made the main frame and shape of this, we want to work on this top part and get this decorative part in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and I realise I've not kept a copy of that face to start work on. So I'm going to duplicate this with the Shift D. I just want to make sure I have the duplicate selected. So what I'm going to do is just make sure that we have no um, relations in here. So I'm going to make single user object. Just make sure that's a single user. Go into edit mode. And I'm going to add in this edge here. Now I just want that in the middle. I'm going to add in another edge. And bring that up to here. I want it to be around about the middle of this area here. Doesn't have to be too exact. I'm going to select that, invert selection, delete faces. So the face that I have there selected is going to be shaded in the same material that I used for the window frame. So window thin. 
Okay, the uh, white I'm actually going to hide for the moment and just work on this part. So if I look at the window, we can actually see that we have a single line that goes all the way through the middle and down here. So we need to create a couple of edge loops in here. So create two and one. Going to select these. I'm going to bevel these out a little bit. So these are parts that are going to be constant. The other parts are going to be less constant. So what we're going to have is we're going to have an additional line on either side, the top and bottom of the middle part, a line at the bottom, line at the top, and some more lines here and there. The way I'm going to do this is just by creating one line where I have a pair of lines and then we're going to bevel those out. Now don't worry if any of your lines are a little bit off because we can always adjust those later on. So now what I need to do is just kind of go in and select the lines or the, uh, the faces that I actually want to keep. Okay, so hopefully you got an idea of what I was trying to achieve there. And you can see I've pretty much got basically exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to invert that selection now, hit X and delete those faces. Now one thing I can do here is I can select all and hit X and do a limited dissolve. And that's going to get rid of quite a few of those edges there, most of which I don't actually need. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at this and I'm just going to try and line up some of these verts a little bit better because if there's one thing I kind of notice is that I've got some areas that are kind of rectangle and some that are more square. I want them all to be pretty square so I'll grab these and just move these a little bit and X get more of a kind of cube shape going there and I'll just do that in a couple of other places as well. I don't need it to be too exact, but I do want to try and stick with uh, those kind of square shapes where I can. And we'll do one more here. Okay, and I think I'm pretty happy with that. Back to object mode. And yeah. Fairly happy with that. What I'm going to do now is just add in a solidify modifier and just change the thickness to this a little bit. Let's unisolate this. And we might have to move this a little bit. I'll have to make sure we hit the move button and not actually just delete the object entirely. There we go. Let's unhide and get that other part back. And yeah, that actually looks pretty good. I quite like the look of that. I'm going to Alt D to duplicate that and move that across in X into the other position. Yeah, I'm just going to try and line this up. You can line this up along the center. Yeah, and that looks pretty good. So let's just have a look at this from a distance. Yeah, and that looks fairly decent. Uh, one thing I maybe should have done there is maybe make it a little bit thicker, but I'm fairly happy with the way that's turned out. Now, in looking at this, I do see that we have one little issue, and that is we have a vert here that's a little bit off. Let's uh, zoom in on this vert. And we actually have to grab this edge. Oh, well, we've actually got a solidify modifier there, so we can't grab that edge. But we can move this 
in X and snap it to this pair and that flattens that out, that straightens that out. I'll just take another quick look around this, see if we have that issue anywhere else, and I don't think we do. Let's unisolate that. And that's pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. Let's just quickly add a little bevel modifier onto this. Our bevel amount should be set by angle. Uh, let's give it one segment and a very small amount. Now we have clamp overlap turned on there, which is making it pretty much impossible to bevel this at all. So we'll take this down to a really small amount, 2.001. There, you can see we've just got a very, very slight bevel on that. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to shade it smooth and that way that makes the highlight a little bit more pronounced. We can get away with a much lower bevel. And uh, that's pretty much us for today. I think I'm going to keep it there for the moment and that's going to be us. So join me tomorrow for the next part of this series.